Hi. Uh, you are listening to Out of Our Shells with Emily M. Chung, and today I have the wonderful Bay Cadman with me. Um, we just worked on a project, didn't we, together? Yes. Um, she was the lead for uh, the makeup, and I got dressed up as a fairy. And it was the tree best bark thing ever. Tree bark very specifically. <laughs> so how how did you get called in on that shoot as a good example? Um, because I day call on magicians quite a bit, and oh, magician, the okay. so I know the hair and makeup team. I know most of the crew there actually quite well. Mm-hmm. And Jade Taylor is one of the main actresses, mm-hmm. and so she had done written this short. I'm trying to not to say. I'm trying to remember not to say <laughs> what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not supposed we to talk say about the name yeah, what, what is it? Yeah, within yeah. the silence. Within the silence. Yeah, um, yeah. But she had written this and was directing it and trying to put together a crew mm-hmm. for it. And my name came up because, especially because I had a strong fantasy element, and that's makeups that kind of I guess I'm known a little bit for doing. I don't get to do them all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I do them for my own creative well-being, but I don't really get paid to do those <laughs> no really well, we, like, we, all, we all have those like that's things. exactly yeah, um yeah. so when this kind of came up and then she asked me to be on board and I really saw the concepts saw the script and everything and was like I think I need to do this yeah. and normally I don't kind of take on uh I want to say lead roles. That's not true. My temperament, I try not to take on lead roles. Mm. And I get thrown into them a lot. Mm-hmm. It's just a thing. Even when I try to, I'm just going to like hide in the back and do, <laughs> and somehow, yeah, yeah, it's just a thing. Yeah. Um, this one, though, uh, because it was a short and because I really, so it wasn't going to take up too much of my life because <laughs> yeah. that's why I turned down a lot of jobs or um, opportunities. I shouldn't say opportunities. It's... I don't want my work to overtake my life, mm, mm-hmm. um, and I'm very, very strict yeah, about it's a fine balance. strict about yeah, that. Yeah, it's good. Um, and so this one being a shorter kind of production, and that I could, I'm like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. And also because they said pixies I, and, <laughs> and body paint, it was so. And good. I said, can there be glitter? And they said, yes. And I was like, <laughs> I can't say no. No. Um, Because I get to do those kind of makeups a lot of times for photography. Right. Different, But I've never been able to really do those high concepts like that Mm. for film. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I'm like, I can do these fantasy makeups and then go on film. I need to jump all over this. And then I was also a little bit freaked out at first because, you know, being in charge and when they, a lot of times I get, you know, you can do whatever you want. And most people know that that's a trap. Mm-hmm. They say, you can do whatever you want as long as it looks like this. <laughs> exactly. You, yeah. Like, whatever you want, you usually really isn't. Um, yeah. This one, I had a little bit of parameters, but the parameters were pixies. Yeah. And then that was it. And any time I would go to her, directly to her, that's another thing that was very rare for me. Yeah. Usually you have to go through the channels right. in film. You go through the channels and you go through this, and maybe I get to the AD, and maybe I get to the mm-hmm. director. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, because small, mm-hmm. and she was writing, directing, producing it. Yeah direct dialogue between herself and I. Yeah. Do, like, not 1,500 Amazing. emails. Right. I text you, you say yes, and I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Do, that, that is... It's a dream. Yeah. It was <laughs> absolutely a dream. We could just hash everything out. And um, so, Jade, I really have to thank her. She let me run. Yeah. And she liked the work that I did, Jimmy, and then trusted me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's, as I said, a very... That's a... I, this is one of the top things I've done, to be honest. Really? Like yeah. how I feel yeah. Yeah. about it. I think it's going to be beautiful. Do, I like from how I really, beautiful. I really do. But yeah. it was more of the feeling that I walked away from. I've done things that, you know, maybe I would get accolades or maybe they were bigger or this, that. But this yeah. one actually like has yeah. a lot of meaning for well, me. You, you created it. You created it. Sort of and like I an called idea, in an A team is... of artists like that were. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I I mean I was, I, I, I was I was thankful that you asked me to, to yes. be all part of it yeah. and I'm 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 so glad about it. but I wasn't mm-hmm. expecting going in and seeing you know seven or eight makeup artists and seven or eight hairdressers and then we all just looked completely different and it yeah. was such yeah. high quality stuff I was just like oh I, my goodness this is gonna be great <laughs> I could pull um, specific skill sets from the people that I knew and also because it was indie so non-union I could bring in my fashion people mm. and I could bring so I could I literally like handpicked each person and each person said yes 
and that made me quite teary <laughs> actually do you, you know like I was really honored that they would because for them to just basically volunteer their time because mm-hmm. really that's what we're talking about yeah. at the level of artists that I that I had out there um and they came out and they did exactly what I knew they could do, do you know, so and yeah. I don't I don't have to micromanage at all not that I would do that anyways because that's my pet peeve when people hire me mm-hmm. and then over my shoulder it's like you hire the people who you know can do the job right and you let them run. Yeah. And if you do that, you get better work out of them. Yeah. So yeah, I just absolutely. say, this, 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 jump in, do it, fix one thing, this is what I want, and let them run. Yeah. And they can yeah. do it. What, what kinds of skill sets were you looking for? Um, someone like Lala McQueen that does very hand painted, mm. delicate designs. So that's why she did some of the, the almost vine. Mendy inspired. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I had Maria Len Babon who does the same thing, hand painted. So I got my two hand painters over there. Uh-huh. Then I got Kelsiana Fitzpatrick, who is one of the most beautiful, in my opinion, beautiful, like, I don't want to even say fashion because what she does is so ethereal and it's very painterly. And it's honestly, it's she's in a whole other category on her own, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like I absolutely adore her, um, and so I set her up in the corner. Yeah, <laughs> picked out two faces that I knew she could paint, and I send you. Was that there. the one with the red? The, th- the uh, yeah. You know exactly. It's beautiful. So yeah. that's the work that she does. Yeah. So I didn't go have to check in. I would bring the model to her, and I say, "You have an hour. I'll be back <laughs> in an hour. I don't have to. It doesn't." Just run. It's lovely to be able to Just work with people run. that are you know can do those things, right? Yeah. Do you, you know, and then Jen Little, who worked yeah. on you, because again, there was a certain look that I had, but once we nailed that down, yeah. I'm going to let you go, because yeah. you're fine. You know, trust the people that you work yeah. with. Um, and so that's always where I've excelled, is when people will trust me to do. To, so I do the same mm-hmm. thing, and mm-hmm. we don't get that that often. Mm-hmm. Well, there was such a feeling of community there. I mean, yeah. obviously, because it was just a bunch of handpicked friends of yours, basically. <laughs> Thank you. They're all my friends. <laughs> but I mean, like I said, it's it, like, like I said, Roya and Ruby and everybody. Yeah, I'm I, just like, yeah, I yeah. and Steven. Not that, that I forgot about Stephen. Oh, no, no, Stephen. No, Stephen, no, Stephen was yes. taking care of Kalani for me. Yes. And yes, jumping in. Yes, but I'm like, yes. I know that the there's The busy drag queen, right? Yes. I looked him up afterwards. He's so fantastic. Oh, my goodness. But again, I gave him, I asked him, he said yes. And I'm like, wow. I'm just saying, I have mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. really? Yeah. Like, really? It shows that you're a good person, Dick. And then, <laughs> but I let him run because I yeah. said, this is what I want. Yeah. This is the feel. Yeah. Go. Yeah. And that's what I mean. It was probably like the easiest. It was great. Yeah. I really had a great time. So I am, um, yeah, I'm still, as I said, I don't think I'm going to be able to top that one. It's going to be hard to top that. Mm. It's going to be hard to top that because mm-hmm. I had like my, yeah, it was friends. It was friends. Yeah. Yeah. No egos. Yeah. Which is shocking. And that's what I told everybody that we can't have egos involved because we all have to work together mm-hmm. and three people are probably going to be, have their hands in each makeup. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So let's not get protective. Let's just. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. Right. I mean, it worked. Yeah. Everything was so smooth I know. and I know. yeah, you just kind of, as a, as a performer, you just kind of got passed around between yep. them and everybody did their own thing and you're just like, wow, that was cool. And, Whoa, that was cool. And ah, oh my God, look at me now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was such a great time. Yeah. So I'm really, I'm really thankful that mm-hmm. I got, and then we, I mean, we got to chat a little bit more, yep. which is. Yep. Which is awesome. So, mm-hmm. um, with a project like this, uh, it was only like one day for the actual makeup itself. I mean, you had a couple. I other had two ones. days. Yeah, yeah, but the, yeah. The big. That big seems just the one day. So. Yeah, yeah. What kind of prep would go into something like this for you? Oh uh, well, I only got called into it about three weeks before we went to camera. Oh That's wow. when I okay. took on the job. So that, along with working, mm-hmm. do you see? It wasn't like I just had three weeks of prep. I was still working. Yeah. Monday to Friday, and then trying to figure out how to do this. Right. Again, I've been doing it long enough. And once I have my team in place, which happened, I got on that, like, the day. Mm-hmm. The day I took the job is when those emails going, so... <laughs> Could we? <please>? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, yeah. And so once I had my team in place, a lot of that settled in. And I just uh, made stuff. I made the last shows, and I made... I made but I, so yeah, it still took a lot of prep. I still put a lot of work into it. Mm-hmm. Most of the stuff we ended up not using actually. Oh really? Um, and mainly because of shooting conditions. I mean, out in that's the, right. It's a rainstorm in the middle of the woods and uh, yeah. And then, what was the original idea versus how it ended up? There was a lot of things that were going to be glued uh, to the body. It was more of a body paint. Oh. Um, but then we also decided costuming everything. It was too cold for. There's no way that we could really do this. Mm. So if we had been on a sound stage there would have been a lot more minimal like a lot more legs arms chest everything would was yeah. to be done but yeah. just so it, it's fine yeah but i'm saying it would yeah. have been it could have been a lot bigger right i can't right. think of that because 
<laughs> no, honestly, I mean, the, yeah, the outfits good. that it's we beautiful. were, were putting, did, it was so yeah. beautiful. Megalee and, then, and Jody did, yeah, amazing work. Yeah, yeah, it all worked. I had this amazing, uh, well, this picture pictures of it already out, so I can say. Yeah, you can. I had this amazing, like, wooden bark, like, almost mm-hmm. Elizabethan collar yep. that made you just feel so regal. Just yeah. to, and with the hair and everything. Yeah. Oh, it was just fantastic. Oh my goodness! So, what um, you talk about your your job? What was you, mm-hmm. what's the other thing that you do that was taking up your time of the week? Um, I was still te- I teach kind of on okay. again off again. I te- teach makeup artistry and uh, I teach the airbrush and body painting mm-hmm. section. So that's actually even when I'm teaching, I get to have um, quite a big creative output because mm-hmm. when I do my demos, I get to do makeup that I love again. So those kind of fantasy elements into yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and then I just day call in the industry. So I, um, I jump from show to show cool. all the time. What, what does that in- entail, a day call? Day call means um, I don't usually go through dispatch in the, that sense. I know enough people in the industry that when they need an extra set of hands. So I'm not on a particular team. Mm-hmm. Um, it's if they need an extra set of hands for that day or the two days or whatever it is, then mm-hmm. they call me in and I work. So, but that means being pretty mobile. Yeah. Team jumping around so yeah. your kit you just pack everything up and you go to a show and then you come back and you go to a different show the next day so right, right. yeah I pick and choose oh that's great uh-huh <laughs> what kinds of what kinds of things would you have in your kit that you would need to take around with you uh everything everything <laughs> how big that's does one of these kits look? I mean I've seen I mean I I try to scale everything down so everything is like in containers like this but uh-huh. still my kit is like it's, it's just like a, a massive a large rolling kit. Suitcase yeah, kinda. I have to be able to do pretty much any kind of makeup. And so if I'm doing an effects call, that's a little bit of a different thing. Or Right. Yeah. Right. And is this, just, as a makeup artist, is this mm-hmm. all stuff you've purchased yourself? Mm-hmm. Or? Wow, that's a lot of out. So your average working makeup artist kit's probably about 10 grand. Probably. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. And do, I, I mean, I, I sometimes get my makeup yeah. from Mac. It's whatever they have. They have like discounts for like makeup artists. Is it, is yeah. it helpful? <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and but I mean, I need thirty foundation colors, right? That's I need, right. Do, I mix and match, but I'm saying okay, maybe at least I have, I don't know, minimum of ten foundations that I can mix. But still, mm-hmm. thirty, forty bucks a pop, whatever that is, right. plus all of your concealers. But that's just that. So I'm. It's all you got to be able to work on anyone who sits in your chair, right? So that's all different ages, all different skin tones, all different concerns. So I'm saying when you start looking at it that way, you realize how many products you need to have. That's incredible! Mm-hmm. Wow, as a singer, I just need this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also I'm also a facial like I, I mm-hmm. I've worked as a waxer for a long time mm-hmm. and I'm a facial threader. Yep. But all I need is some that's right. thread. No. I don't, I don't need ten ten thousand dollars worth of <laughs> pretty of, much. Of it it kind of goes about to that. Yeah. Wow, yep. that's incredible. So, is this something that you sort of amass over time as you become over more professional, time. or you is start it... out usually if you go to school, you end up with, you start with kind of a basic kit, and that mm-hmm. would be a couple thousand dollars, right? Yeah, that's kind of rolled into your tuition, generally okay. speaking. Um, and then it's usually more your kit is built by your jobs, so especially when you're starting out, you kind of have bare minimum. Yeah. You get hired for a job. I might have to see, and that's at the beginning where you don't make a lot of money because usually it's going right back into your kit because Mm -hmm. I have to buy something for that job. I don't have enough stuff. So you spend your money on that, and then you only use half of it. So half of that is still in your kit. Right. So you go into the next job, and that's what I mean. Your kit starts to be kind of built by the jobs that you're taking. Right. Because people go, well, why don't we get this or why don't I get this? I'm like, well, where are you going to be working? Mm. I'm not. Why would you invest a whole bunch of money in airbrush stuff or body painting stuff that I do? Do you see when you're doing a smoky eye in brown? Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying you can do that. Yeah. But that's not where you should be spending your money. Uh, I see. And I always tell my students too, smoky eye in brown will pay your rent. It's Mm -hmm. not fancy. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. put away the teal glitter. I love teal glitter. (laughs) I do. But I'm saying that's not going to pay your rent. Yeah. And that's kind of life lessons with a lot of it, too, yeah. of just it's not. You kind of got to do a lot of the work to pay the bills. And then you and that's with artists in general. And mm-hmm. then you do what you love <laughs> more <laughs> after work yeah. or on the week. It's not that I don't love my job, but I'm just saying I don't generally speaking for a lot of it maybe I don't walk out of there fired up creatively you mm. know my creativity is not like yeah I'm yeah like, yeah that other short see that's what I'm saying that one was different yeah exactly. um but 
yeah, generally that's not the case. So then I go and do a creative on my own or I do a shoot or something yeah. like that. And then that's where I feel. Yeah. So so how, how did you get into makeup to begin with? Oh, so way, way, way back. So <laughs> I've always loved makeup, and my mom facilitated that oh, really? love of it also. My mother wore no makeup. My mom didn't really wear makeup, <laughs> but I was the type of kid that would be, like, I would, like, love face painting. I would love it, and I remember my mom, there's, i got to find a picture. There's a picture somewhere, <laughs> because we had the Kiss album, the oh, Kiss yeah. Alive, I, from my aunt, of course. My mom didn't have this album. <laughs> and on the back were their pictures, and I just I uh, loved them so much and I begged my mom to buy me face paint and each day I pick a different character usually Ace freely only because of the silver that mm. was my big thing mm-hmm. and I would pick a different kiss character <laughs> and you would paint yourself and I would paint <laughs> my face and then I would go roller skating ah, outside the house so <laughs> I was like seven years old probably well, maybe six then sorry so yeah six yeah. years old and literally blonde pigtails <laughs> Roller skates, the metal ones too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, that, yeah. It, yeah, and because that would have been yeah, yeah, seventy nine, <laughs> and full kiss makeup. <laughs> so, That's there fantastic. are pictures of me. Oh my goodness, you might and have to see one of those. <laughs> and my mom and I go, you let me roller skate around the neighborhood like that, and she goes, and you turned it into a career. So there was that. I came from a theater background in high school, right? So that kind of it all mm-hmm. segues mm-hmm. into it. Straight out of school, I was in a band. So you sing as well, right? I, yeah, somewhat. Yeah, 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 no, no. I've seen, I've, I've seen videos. It's good. Yeah. It's um, good. So very goth, very industrial. So my black, I like it. Yeah. I just use a blush brush and the black eyeshadow. <laughs> like that's it was there. So I did that for a couple of years. That imploded, <laughs> as it does sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> with very distinct personalities mm. mixed with substance abuse mixed with I mean it was yeah mm. yeah pretty dark um that band broke up unemployed mm. didn't know what to do a friend of mine was in makeup school okay and I went and modeled for him a few times just for him to practice and yeah I was like I think I could do this because I love yeah. makeup anyways yeah, and I've always yeah, yeah. kind of done it yeah so that was actually how that okay. happened. I modeled for him a few times, so I would have been about 20, oh, four, 23, mm-hmm. maybe. And then I thought I could do this, and I just I signed up. I just signed up. I didn't go on a tour. I didn't mm-hmm. go on anything because I was already in the classroom a couple times. Right. Too. And right. then I said I'm going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's where that is how it started. That's that is how I went to makeup school. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then and then right at, did, it, did it kind of like lead directly into you working in it or? In- um. Yep. Um. I first student film that I had done was like two weeks out of school Mm -hmm. doing makeup and I had no idea what I I mean you know what you're doing but you have no idea because now you're not in the safety of a classroom anymore nobody can tell you what to do there's (laughs) no one to ask and that was also before smartphone you have to remember I couldn't google anything I couldn't youtube anything right right. like either you knew it or you didn't yeah and so there was that element of like I was terrified Mm. terrified um, but then I realized nobody else knew what I was supposed to do anyways. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. We always think they're going to find out. I'm like, they don't know. Because no, they, they don't know. they'd be doing it. Yeah. They don't know. So they don't know if I'm just faking it. Because I was. Yeah. <laughs> I was faking a lot of it. Um, yeah. And I ended up doing film for about a year. Uh-huh. Not really getting paid. Because you know, I'm talking like low, like no budget, student mm. film kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I realized I didn't like film. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is where the story is funny because now yeah. that's what I that's do. What Twenty do, yeah. years later, yeah, long way of yeah. getting there. Yeah. Um, but I stopped that and I did more fashion and things like that. Gee, I took any job I could, right? I could get, yeah. And just um, then I ended up being asked back to teach a, like a very small like fashion component. Ah. that's when the school was still quite small in right. comparison to Blanche, Blanche McDonald. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was teaching and kind of subbing for people and just kind of learning and yeah, freelancing the whole time. And mm-hmm. I took a day and a half workshop on airbrush, bought my own equipment again, before YouTube, before any of these yeah, things, yeah. um, and was self-taught. And at that point people weren't really doing it. Like 
meaning from a glamour or like a fantasy. Mm. Maybe, mm. I mean, there's always some people that did it, but mm. I'm just saying it wasn't really as accepted as now it's just understood. The person right. goes, oh, airbrush, Do you, back then. Yeah, yeah, for, for people who don't know, what exactly is airbrush? Um, so, you want to get the real technical? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. It atomizes a liquid medium and propels it onto the surface with the aid of an aerosaurus. Oh, but well, there we go. <laughs> what that means is you put liquid in there, it goes in front of an aerosaurus and blows it out into a mist, right? Yeah. So, you're airbrushing, you're you're applying paint or makeup or anything in little pixels, right? Little dots. Right. The more the dots fill in, the stronger the color appears. So it's a very different way of working and how Versus you get like gradation. A, a brush very, very different. So you very can do like, different. Like, like like classic makeup I in can. an airbrush? Really? I can. I never thought of um, it that way. More for highlighting and shading that you can do eyeshadow, eyebrows, all of those things, but um, there's not as much of a payoff with that. What mm. I'm saying is that if you're doing it, it's usually because you're selling something mm-hmm. or it's ego-driven. What I'm saying, from a makeup artist standpoint, most of it, I can accomplish it with brushes and do, yeah, it's not really a huge advantage. Yeah. But when you do those big blown-out makeups and those sculpted kind of things, that's where airbrush really, really excels. Oh, okay. And it excels more in makeup effects Yeah. Do you, and monster makeups and that because it's a lot of texturing. Yeah. And that, so that's usually where its home is mm-hmm, a lot mm-hmm. of times in makeup. Um, but yeah, I was self-taught and then they started the airbrush program. So that was after I already learned how to do, uh, it, do it. Yourself, and then I yeah. segued into teaching it because like nobody was really doing it. Oh, so cool. that would have been 2002, I guess, when I started teaching it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Avalanche. Yeah. Cool. So when you'd go into a like an airbrush class, what mm-hmm. why, do you focus on like a specific look for the day, or how would you structure? Uh, a- yeah, uh, it's still getting into technique. Like I'm pretty hard on my students with <laughs> learning like proper technique, even if they can't do it at the time, knowing that they have to work on it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and then it's usually then a specific demo that I do, and then they have time to try to. Replicate it. it. Yeah, yeah. Their let, version of it. Yeah, ex- yeah exactly. I was um, I was in the World Body Painting Festival yes. in Austria yeah. as a model mm-hmm. a couple of times, and they have a lot of different um, categories. Yes. So they've got the brush and sponge, which literally is using yep. a brush and or a sponge. Um, they've got the special effects one, which I absolutely love. And then they also have the airbrush. And it's, yep. it's really interesting to see the different aesthetic. It's very different. It's very different. It, yeah. it, it looks like what you would see like on, on a car or something because mm-hmm. you know, that's also airbrush, right? Yeah. It's very smooth, yeah. very, very um, layered, but in a different kind of way to yeah. when you're actually using a physical brush. Everything is diffuse. Right? Yeah. Everything has a softness to it. So yeah. that's where I view the airbrush is another brush in my kit though. I don't exclusively airbrush. Mm-hmm. I think that's the thing. It's like you use that tool when you need it. Mm-hmm. So it. do you always bring your airbrush along with you as an option? or uh, If I'm doing anything fantasy related, absolutely. Do you, Standard makeups and that, uh, probably not. Yeah. Um, just for space. So if you're day calling. You, yeah, it, it takes up quite yeah. a bit. How, how big is a, it's a... Compressor can be about that big. Like it's just more like when you're box, setting yeah. up and that. I don't really haul it around unless I know I'm really going to gonna use it. Use it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So what kind of, what, what's been the most, like, like, this fairy thing was fantastic, but yeah. do you have any other, like, monumental fairy things that you've created that you absolutely loved? Monumental. Um, well, the whole thing that changed my life from not working in film for 15 years. Yeah. Because I did not. Right. Um, my husband okay. works in film. He's a makeup effects artist. and um, Oh, Okay. And I never thought I'd work in film, mm. especially. And then the kids were growing up, and we have our, our youngest now is thirteen. Mm-hmm. But you know, all of these things were happening, and I'm like, it's very difficult to balance kind of film work and thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hours a day. Right? With is that family, wow? On average, that's yeah. crazy. Makeup's first in, last out, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you need to be there to touch in, <laughs> to touch up. Your your yeah. first in, last out. So if you're shooting days twelve hours, yeah. but you're there an hour or two hours beforehand right. you, and you're thereafter. So yeah. it, they're very, very long days. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was, and as I said, my husband was doing that. So I was really exclusively teaching at the school then nine to five. Right. Pick up the kids from daycare, pick up the kids from school, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So that was my life. And um, then he was working on Star Trek here Ooh. in the city. And they were in the, he was more exclusively in the shop. He did a bit of on set, but mostly in the shop. Mm-hmm. And we were kind of joking about things because they really needed painters. They really needed airbrush artists. Ah. And um, he kind of said, look out, you better be careful. They're going to call you in because like, there's nobody else. They were already maxed out with everybody. Right. And I said, but I don't even 
paint prosthetics. I legitimately don't do that kind of work right. at all. And um, they were still looking for someone. And then Joel Harlow's, well, wife now, uh, Cindy, I guess he, they said, do you know anybody? And this was in the shop too. Like, do you know anybody who airbrushes? <laughs> and um, he says, well, my wife does, but she, she, <laughs> she doesn't, doesn't want do. to. <laughs> no, but she also doesn't yeah. do this work. Yeah, There's yeah. prosthetics and aliens. That I've never painted one in my entire life. Oh, up until that point you hadn't. Had not. Oh, okay. Ever. Yeah, yeah. Ever. Yeah. But they showed them one of my body paints, one of my robot body paints, and they said, bring her in. Mm-hmm. And so he phoned me, and I'm at Nestor's, like, shopping for dinner and stuff. <laughs> and he says, um, can you come into the shop? I'm like, what? And I go, when? He goes, now. And I'm like, well, I can maybe be there in half an hour. Like, what? <laughs> and I went in, and they said, can you start work tomorrow at 8 a.m.? And I'm like, I've never – and I walked into the shop, and – there was, I cannot explain what the shop looked like, like with the aliens and the people that were, the caliber of people. Like, these are the best of the best of the best. Uh, yeah. And the people from L.A. that were up there and Joey Orozco and all of these people that I'm like, I couldn't even breathe <laughs> when I walked in. And this is also Joel Harlow. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, he's one of the best makeup artists in the world, right? Wow. And I'm like, I have not painted I, I I don't even know what I'm doing here I do not know and I um, I felt like I was gonna pass out like mm. I was scared mm, mm-hmm. and they said how much do you want and I'm like I don't even know <laughs> I'm not even in the union they're like don't worry about it we're gonna get a permit for you like and all of this stuff because I'm like of course they can because it's Star Trek right you, like yeah 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 but they I'm like I don't even no I don't even have a pash airbrush like I know it doesn't mean anything to you but it's a different <laughs> airbrush that a lot of yeah. makeup effects people use yeah have one of them <laughs> okay and um my my crew pass is quite hilarious because it's literally like 15 minutes after that dave heffler walks me over to this day and my 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 shot is like <laughs> <laughs> i'm like, here just like i don't know what to do that's my badge right because i'm like huh, i <laughs> went from nestor's market to <laughs> like i can't handle this uh-huh. Um, and yeah, I went to work the, the next day and, um, set up and it was terrifying. Like I'm, I wish I could say like I walked in yeah. and everything was fine. I'm like, oh my God, I can't be here. I can't be here. No. Cause you feel like a fraud, right? Like you feel imposter like I syndrome cannot, is a major imposter thing. syndrome it's and I still thing. have that. It's it, me too. I still have that. <laughs> and this was like. This was legit imposter. I don't even do this stuff. Well, somebody thought you could do Someone it. Someone right? thought I could do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and thankfully, my husband was in the same paint room as me because he would come by because they would just hand me stuff and they go paint this. And first they would say, you know, you need to prep the piece first, and then you can spray it with Beta Bond, and then you get. They would rattle off all the stuff, and I'd be like, uh, I don't know what that means. And the first time I said that, like Werner laughed at me, and because they thought I was kidding. Yeah. Right. Because I'm like how are you in the, like, what yeah. are you doing in the shop? I'm like, no, like, actually, I don't know what any of that means. And they're like, oh, you're serious. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm dead serious. Um, I was supposed to stay for two weeks, and I stayed for two, like, almost two months. Wow. Till it wrapped. They kept me on. And, yeah, I painted, and I learned, like, it was a stress management, uh, and I sure. almost quit. Yeah. Um, only because of stress, not because of what anybody else was doing to me, but because I felt like I can't do this. Mm-hmm. Do you, it wasn't the expectations, but and some of the stuff we were doing was very complicated. Mm. Like I'm saying, like the work itself was very. What, what were you working on? Painting exactly? all the pieces, all those the prosthetics, all the prosthetics. The prosthetics in this particular one, everything was kind of going out um, almost eighty five percent painted like pre-painted. Uh, okay, so like a so they could an, save a time. Head or a, yeah, or the a... full f- six pieces. Of, of stuff. Stuff. On, on silicone. Like la- latex? Silicone. Was, silicone. Silicone. So, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so I had to learn a whole different style of painting mm-hmm. and products and stuff that I just didn't do. So I had to learn, and I had to learn in a hurry. Really quick. And there was no learning. Cur- like, there was no time. Yeah. There was yeah. no practicing. There was no... So there was people in there that Jimmy really, really helped me. And... Um, yeah, and after I remember talking to, to Joel about it, and I said, thank you. You know what I mean? It was just yeah. like he gave me a chance, and he was quite—he was very kind to me also and encouraging to me, and I think he really <laughs> probably saw how terrifying <laughs> <laughs> I was. So I have a very 
I have a soft spot for Joel with, with that for kind of keeping me on. And um, yeah, I learned like it changed my whole life. Mm. It changed my entire life. The complete direction of what you were doing. Because then it was like five months after that. Because then I went back to the whole thing. I'm like, OK, I'll never. That was an interesting little. That was fun. A little blip. Yeah. <laughs> into it. And I guess that's the other thing. Like I was so scared and I almost quit. And then the only thing I could think about was the only reason why I'd be quitting was because I was scared. Mm. Um, and that's not a good enough reason, one. Mm. And two, I thought about people who've worked very, very hard who would give anything to be given that opportunity. Do you mean that would, right. like, who are pounding on doors right now who want to do makeup, who, who want to do this style? Yeah. And who would give anything to do that? And something like that to work on Star Trek? That's, to paint aliens? Like, I'm saying, like, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> But also, like... So how dare I, though? Mm -hmm. Like, how how about you just step back and go, I'm going to do the best I can and Mm -hmm. not chicken out? And not that I was ever ungrateful. It was more like I actually felt like I couldn't handle the pressure. I was more worried about failing with it. Um, But no one was putting that on me. They they needed people to help. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I was able to do that. Um, And I, you know, basically be an asset, not a liability. (laughs) No, like... Yeah, yeah. Don't mess it up, yeah. kind of thing, and um, so it changed the whole trajectory of my career. Because then five months after that, I got another call because they're like, "Oh, well, you did Star Trek, huh? Can you come work on this?" You, and I'm like, uh. "And it's funny because about a year later, after doing quite a few projects and being asked to do things, and then, you know, then getting into the union or like starting that whole real process, taking it seriously, yeah. and." from permity and building up your hours and doing everything. Um, yeah, I still kind of, like, I don't work in film. And I'm actually now I'm like, no, I, you I do. do work in film. Yeah. I just didn't think I ever would. Mm. Do you, and so now I've, I find that balance with it. But yeah, so I'd have to say, I mean, I've got to say that that particular, it was, pro- I mean, was well, it has to be. Yeah. Because it changed everything. everything. That's Literally incredible. everything. And so do, I mean, do you, are you, do you enjoy it now working in film or is it something that you're like I do no I I do um I just it takes so much of your life to work in it full time Mm -hmm. that that's what I don't do right um because I would not be happy yeah and I've been offered jobs that would put me more full time and Mm -hmm. things like that and um maybe they have a little bit more glory Mm -hmm. or you have a title or you have that um I'm happy day calling and I'll go in and do like one day I'll be in the makeup effects trailer um, because I do kind of float between the two. Yeah. If I'm kind of last man in for makeup effects. Do yeah. you, or if there's something maybe that I feel I can contribute paint-wise, because that's mm-hmm. a stronger skill set that I have, um, I go there. Uh, and then I go right back down to being a second assist. Mm-hmm. Do you, like what I'm saying is I just float, and I don't really care as long as I'm working. Yeah. I yeah. don't have that. Because some people won't take second assist jobs. Mm. Cause that's below them, I think. Uh, I see. I or think that's like how it. they think. I, no, I, I, I don't get it because yeah. what that does for me just saying, I'll work, yeah. is I can work two, three days a week on all different shows and roam around. And yeah, that's the fun part, right? I mean? like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And really, like, we're making movies. Like, I don't want to say it's not hard because it's hard from, from some standpoints for how mm-hmm. long sometimes the hours are, but... We get paid, and I don't know, like on Magicians, I was on a pirate ship one day. No, legitimately, like eight-minute ferry ride out to the middle. Really? Yeah. No, and I'm you not kidding. On a pirate ship. I, was, I was on a pirate <laughs> ship. So, I love it. Like, and I look around sometimes. I'm like, okay, so I had to be up at three in the morning, do you, yeah. and I was doing this. But then I look around, and I'm like, I'm on a pirate ship. Do you, or I see people. I don't know, doing these wicked kung fu fighting stunts. Do you, and I'm standing there, <laughs> going like. I'm getting paid to, like, I don't know, sometimes we blow stuff up. Sometimes <laughs> I try to stay away from those things personally. Mm. Um, but, do you, like, I look at it and go, like... That's kind of how I feel with my music career. It's, it's, I, it's I can't like, be cranky what, what, about I mean, it. I, I, I was, was on a pirate ship. I know. I was just singing in it for a circus gig, dressed yeah. as Mother Nature. Like, yeah. I awesome. can't really complain about this. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. With but it? it's just also being open to those kinds of experiences, yeah. right? And, and, yeah. and having this kind of mindset that yeah. you do, that just everything... Whatever, it's whatever fine. comes your way, you, it's fine. you can take. And yeah. You have to, don't be afraid to walk through that door. I think that's the thing. Because why I wouldn't have taken that job, because I really shouldn't have. Mm. In a lot of ways. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you look at that on paper, 
you probably shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Like you're going in with like some of the best people in the world and you've never painted this thing. I mean, that's kind of silly, right? (laughs) Um, But I did. Do you know what I mean? And then more importantly, I went back the next day and I went back the next day even though I couldn't sleep and I felt, Mm. you you know, and it was only because you're scared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that still creeps in quite a bit sometimes because there's certain jobs or certain things because I think people have more faith in my abilities than I have mm. you you know no, you can do it I'm like I don't think so but <laughs> we, all have this, yeah, we all have it's those terrible feelings, though, right? and it, it's, it's terrible it's, it's good to be to recognize it artists you know? we're really bad for that yeah yeah a a lot lot people, it's, it's, it's a real thing it's very real, it's a real thing. and it's it's kind of awful yeah and but, I don't think you ever really get over it Mm-hmm. I still, I'm not over it. Mm-hmm. There are certain things I feel very confident in. I guess that's the difference. Do you know what I mean? But there's still going to be something when you're in the creative field like this, you're still going to be thrown for a loop. You're still going to do have to do makeup that you've never done before. Yeah. You, you're still going to have to do something that you've never done. Mm-hmm. Do you, and you walk in, you're like, I hope this works because this has to go to camera in three hours. Do you, like there's no practice. It's like, right. You have a crew of like 120 people waiting for you. Mm-hmm. Like, you want to talk about pressure. And that's mm-hmm. why I tell my students, too. They're like, what if we make a mistake? I'm like, well, make it now. Make it now in the classroom because this is the safest place you're going to be. Right. It's not safe out there. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> trying to scare you, but you're on your own. Yeah, yeah, In a exactly. lot of respects. And if you're having a bad day, it doesn't matter. If they're late or something happens, it doesn't matter. It Do you, still They still to have to go to camera. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You could even say that the 6 o'clock news, if you're doing the makeup for them, the, it starts at 6 o'clock. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter if they were stuck in traffic and you needed this time. It doesn't matter. Right. Do you, so there's a lot of things. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So what? Yeah. Get it done. Get it done. Exactly. And so that's what I try to do with my students. Yeah. How do you feel it's different? Because when you were starting, as you were saying, there there weren't these options like YouTube and all these things to like look at these people doing these mm-hmm. things. Now, are things very different for, for people who are going into makeup? I think it can be. I mean, yeah, because before, if when I learned to airbrush, I had a book. I did buy a DVD. <laughs> okay, it's a thing called books. <laughs> I, oh, irony goodness. that we're in the library. I know, right? right? <laughs> Doing this, but and and it would show a picture in step one, step two, step three. But again, depending on how you learn, yeah. I don't know really how you even got from step two to step three or picture four to five. Right. Like I can, yeah. I can see it. Yeah. I don't know how you did it. Yeah. And especially with anything art and painting and seeing yeah, so colors. Yeah, so much touch, right? You, or you yeah. got to see it. Because mm-hmm. as soon as I see you do it, I'm like, oh, that's the arm movement. Right. You didn't show me the arm movement there. You just <laughs> step two and three with it. Yeah. So that visual into it, um, I, yeah, because I'll even quickly look at things now. Do you mm-hmm. know if I'm like, oh, uh, how would it quick? And I can kind of see a different technique. Yeah. And you can pull from anywhere in the world. It's crazy. From all it? of these artists. So... I don't know. Like, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's easier because I don't want to be like, it's easier for you kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is. It is. <laughs> yeah. It is. There's so many things to draw from, right? Yeah. Exactly. I can just find it instantly. Yeah. I might have to email somebody. Well, I didn't have an email. Well, I kind of did, I think, when we started. But yeah. I, when I started in makeup, I really thought I'd made it to that level when mm. I got a pager. Right? I had one of those too. I had a pager, <laughs> but you'd still have to carry your quarters around because yeah. your pager would go off and then they'd leave a message. Yeah. And then you have to listen to your message. Yeah, somewhere. so I needed two quarters because <laughs> I have to listen to the message you left me and I still have to call you. Yeah. Right? At least if you just gave me the numbers, there's one quarter I had to spend to return it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a whole other different thing. I yeah. think what's interesting now is that when I started. Um, because I liked to do kind of stranger makeups or I wanted things to be more fantasy driven. Yeah. And school didn't really teach you that Mm -hmm. because there's not really, as I said, there's not a big market for it, Mm -hmm. but it's stuff I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And not many people could help me with that. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's very, you just stumble across it on your own or you just, I couldn't, I mean, maybe I would do a quick photo shoot, but it wasn't the same. See, now... There's way more sense of community. Right. I can find an artist that I like. You're not alone. Yeah. Like, yeah. I look at other people's work, and I'm inspired by it. And I'm like, wow, there's people doing that out yeah. there. Yeah. And I never saw that. So mm-hmm. I equate that. And I was still in a big city, mm-hmm. Vancouver. Right. I equate that to people also being in small towns and wanting to do art, not being able to see. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they're, they're on their own yeah. with it. 
now with that online kind of presence, you can look around, you can like, I can see that. Or you can record it in your bedroom and put it out to the world. It's true, right? know, Or yeah, yeah. I can do that makeup. I'll do Instagram makeup on myself sometimes. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily Instagram makeup, mm-hmm. but I will do that makeup because I have an idea or a concept and I just put it out there. Mm-hmm. And really as artists, that's kind of what you're always just trying to do. Absolutely. Sometimes people say it's for themselves. I'm like, it is, but it's not. The content sometimes is for yourself. Right. But really, you're doing it to throw it out there to the world. Yeah. To yeah. bounce it off somebody. Exactly. To maybe affect them some way, even if they go, ugh. <laughs> no, but it is. Like, that's why you're doing it. Right. Whether you course. realize it or not. Because mm-hmm. we don't just do it and hide it away. Mm-hmm. Do you see? You have, you're compelled. If you're yeah. really kind of really for, into For a it, reaction, right? You have to. Yeah, yeah. And people go, for attention? Well, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But that's what artists do. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's not a negative thing. No, no, you're no. doing it for attention. Well, yeah, 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 and also just uh, yes. like it's the, yeah, for me, it's the emotional connection. It's the hundred percent. You know, it's the it's the getting the reaction out of out of people. Like when I'm when I'm singing and I mm-hmm. see somebody like sobbing in front of me from what yeah. I'm singing, I'm like, oh yes, you That's got you it. Want. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and I, it's, it's it's terrible to say I love it when you cry, but at no, the same true. time, it's true. 100%. You know, it's just having that that visceral reaction. Yeah. And now, I mean, things are. are Things are online, so you don't you don't get the that personal thing as much anymore. It's it's more comments and things like this, which can go good or bad either mm-hmm. way, right? Yeah. Um, but what would you say to someone who's who's like starting off in makeup and they seeing all these videos and like would you would you think it's a good idea to put your own self out there as far as as far as like showing what you can do? I, or I guess so. I think with makeup, it's there's so many directions you can mm-hmm. go in, right? Um, and so there's people that just want to do regular makeup or mm-hmm. bridal makeup. And yeah. I get that. Yeah. That was never me. Yeah. I always wanted something a little bit bigger and bolder. I was always into that theatrical. Kiss. D- <laughs> David Bowie. Yeah. Like, also, yeah. Like, um, and those were like early influences, mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. And so it... I, and even now when I do an Instagram makeup, a lot of times it's not even about perfection. I don't... I'm actually, I'm really not that good of a makeup artist in a lot of ways, actually. Mm. Um, not when it comes to uh, details and technical things. Do you, like, I, uh, symmetry, <laughs> it's a hard not thing. my strong point. It's a, <laughs> it's a hard thing. The yeah. horrible thing for me working in film, and I'm going to confess this now, continuity, horrible. Oh, yeah. I, I can't replicate stuff- myself when I do certain things. I struggle. Mm. Like, I look at my, I didn't even the same makeup. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. I try. Yeah. Um, I don't have that eye for deep. I really go by feel. And mm-hmm. when I, when I paint and when I do a lot of those, especially the airbrush makeups that I do, those big, like, avant-garde ones. Yeah. I kind of have a general thing, but I don't make charts. I know that's horrible because I tell my students to make charts. <laughs> don't because I paint intuitively mm, mm-hmm. and I roll with colors and I roll with things that are going to happen yeah. that is how I paint yeah that's a terrible idea for film right right yeah terrible um but that's why I do a lot of those makeups on my own yeah to, or or I will do that makeup and I'm and again I'm not interested in perfection mm. um I respect it mm-hmm. like someone like I think of when I think of very technically proficient someone like Timothy Hung mm-hmm. um phenomenal artist and these line details and everything is perfect and I like I am literally the polar opposite Mm. of that Mm -hmm. and everything to me is smudgy glossy messy and I care about kind of the feeling that I get from those makeups right like that's actually more important to me so sometimes I'll take things I'll smudge them down yeah and I kind of like that makes me feel sad or that makes me feel strong or that and I go yeah with that that is actually my favorite makeups to kind of do yeah which also works very well with creature kind of stuff because you want it it more gritty it falls into that and that's what Mm. I mean I'm kind of in this weird little world that I don't know where I really fit in but Mm -hmm. I just kind of like float and Mm -hmm. do things um but I would tell people, find you know, where do you want to work? I just want people to know that there are many options. And a perfect example for me is I didn't work in film mm-hmm. and I didn't do it for 15 years and I was just fine. Yeah. yeah. And I made a living. And I think that's the other thing. Do you want to be an accomplished working artist? 
successful or do you want to be famous? Because there's two very different things that are happening right now. Yeah. And I understand the pressure for the likes and the follows, and I get that. And it has invaded our industry, actually, like very much so. How how, how so? Well, before you used to, things were a little bit more Mm artist-driven. And now it's influencer-driven. And the companies, even the bigger companies that used to cater more to artists, they have to play that game. Right. And they have to because that's just how marketing is done now. It's a different – the business model, the advertising, ha- it's changed. Right. It's changed. So they get these people, in th- which and some of them are great. You know, but some of it, I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, mm. don't want to come down and say it's bad because it's not. It's just different. Yeah. Right? But – I mean, it was always about advertising. I get that also. It's yeah. always about money. I get that also. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, the makeup artistry part, the artistry part is disappearing sometimes. Mm. And everyone's just doing the same carbon copy makeup. And I think that's what gets me. You, like that one yeah. hurts me. And it hurt me even way back. Yeah. Because I wanted to do something different. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I've managed to be able to do that, but I think I created on my own terms now, and that's where I think Instagram is actually great because again, I can do that and throw it out into the world. Yeah, exactly. With it, and I can also see artists and discover artists that do, they're doing the same thing the in their own kind of little thing. corner of the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, or I can see even a very famous artist that I don't know if she's that famous to the average person though. She, mm-hmm. She's not an influencer. In fact, she rebels against this. Also, mm-hmm. she's got. It's Alex Box, okay. who I'm talking about, who is like one of I, I, all these names. I'm so excited to go check them out. <laughs> Alex Box. Okay, great. Is an absolute like inspiration to me, and someone like Joanne Gare. Mm-hmm. Again, names that average person maybe won't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Joanne Gare was one of my earliest inspirations with makeup too. Yeah. She did. Um, Demi Moore's uh, body paint suit on the cover of Vanity Fair. If you think oh, way back, okay. you've yeah. seen the image. I, I you have I seen have. the image. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember seeing that. That blew me away. It blew my mind. blew a lot of people's minds yeah. for it. Yeah. But that's when I'd first kind of discovered her. Mm-hmm. And I've been, yeah, like she does the swimsuit editions, like mm-hmm. the Sports Illustrated. The Sports she Illustrated. She paints yeah. all of those. And I remember there was one time when I posted uh, one of my one of my makeups and this is and that I don't know it's still kind of see I get there's been a few times now over the years and I remember the first time and she liked one of my make she liked one of my body paints and that was like uh, <laughs> I'm serious yeah because it meant the world to me yeah because as I said it wasn't about the number of likes or anything like that it was who liked it and when I respect artists I mean I have mm. that ultimate respect and they say hey that looks good I'm like oh thanks <laughs> Thank you. So it can be good out there, and you can connect to people. And the same thing with Alex Box. I've had a slight, you know, interaction. (laughs) She posted a picture of me wearing one of her shirts kind of thing. And that was – and it's because I get what she's saying. Mm -hmm. And she rebels against everything being perfect. And Mm -hmm. and she makes some of the ugliest, beautiful makeups. Mm -hmm. No, because she deconstructs things, and it challenges you. Cool. With I'm – yeah, there's a whole other world out there. I'm going to have to – yeah. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. So – People yeah. wanting to do makeup, check it. You, the influencers you can find. Yeah, they're going to be the first ones coming up. But yeah. dig a little bit deeper and find people who are doing some really interesting yeah. stuff. Ryan Burke is another one who I love. Yeah, we got to <laughs> sign there. Ten minutes. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I mean, I felt I felt very much that way when I when I was at the the World Body Painting Festival because yeah. it was really like artist driven. Holy moly, the top of the top of the people who were there mm-hmm. competing for these titles and the things that they would create, especially yeah. the special effects stuff, just, yep. you, it was no longer a person. It yep. was some crazy creature that has just crawled out of the undergrowth that is just like now standing in front of you and looks completely real. And that kind of stuff, like that kind of rebelling all, all, also against the CGI-ness of, of things that have yes. happened right nowadays, right? Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love, and, and I feel like part of that is coming back as well with like the dark crystal and the sort of stuff like yeah. trying to get away from people going back to practical mm-hmm. effects mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. of times uh, I just think I don't think we can be snobby against either one it's just it's finding the middle ground yeah with it and I think with artists you've got to find you got to pay your rent you got to work yeah you have to do work that maybe it doesn't as I said, creatively fulfill you, but yeah. then you pay the rent and then you save up your money and you do a short film that creatively fulfills, fulfills you. you or you, you know, so 
there is that and I also just kind of want to to let people know starting out like oh is there make is there a career in it Mm -hmm. it certainly can be yeah there absolutely can be yeah with it and also if you're a little bit on the outside of it a little bit you think you have a different approach to Mm -hmm. it there's definitely a place for you also Mm -hmm. with it Smokey Iron Brown's gonna pay your rent though (laughs) get that neutral palette it's true it's true yeah I actually I've had this really wonderful moment where um, a friend of mine who is is a, is a kind of person who doesn't do any makeup, doesn't do anything specific. Mm-hmm. She she actually came to me and she said, you know what, you know, because I, I like I said I do I do the facial threading. She's like, I saw your post about facial threading and and would you would you be able to help me with my makeup? I'd love love it if you would teach me. And mm-hmm. I said, oh, and, I, and then then I had that moment of imposter syndrome where I'm like, I I know how to do my own face. <laughs> Yeah. But but she was asking me for for any yep. kind of advice, you know. And and now we've done it and it's been a lot of fun. It is. It's it's great, you know, to yep. be able to to just have a little at least give her some skills. I think that's the know? other thing with makeup too is that you can just do things on a very it can shift people's feelings too. That's, there is yeah. a whole other side of it. Yeah, I know people exactly. that do work exactly. with people that have had medical situations um you know even look good, look good, feel better campaigns mm-hmm. and things like mm-hmm. that. Do you, mm-hmm. Like there are, it, it's superficial, but it can be a lot more than it that. Can be, it can it be, it can be way more than that. And, and yeah, just I mean, with my work as a as a waxer as well, yeah. just the confidence that people get, yeah, it, it, it just completely changes just from one moment to the next mm-hmm. when they look at themselves and they feel, oh wow, you know, I, I didn't realize that I could look, mm-hmm. you know, like this. And so makeup, I also have you have that appreciation for mm-hmm. it as well. Um, as well as like the fantastical stuff, it's also this fact that you can actually change how a person's level of confidence, yeah. um, which you know, good or good or bad as to whether we feel it's. I, I think everybody should feel exactly comfortable do whatever as you they need are. To you do. know, yeah, exactly. No makeup or not. But do whatever <laughs> makes you, know, you feel fine. good. Exactly, with it. exactly. But to be able to have that ability mm-hmm. um, is also something that's really powerful. I mm-hmm. think for mm-hmm. for a lot of people, and then to be able to you know take it into the world and. and Create beauty. Exactly. It's all about creating beauty. <laughs> I always say, honestly, I use a Nick Cave quote a lot. It's beauty that's going to save the world. Ah. Uh. Uh, you can take that any way you it's want. True. But I do. It's it true. pops into my head sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Things are dark sometimes. Mm. And I'm like, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Or that this, art. This or that painting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. Exactly. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for talking with me, Dave. This has been thank you. illuminating in a lot of different ways. Um, but uh, good luck with the whatever project Wherever you're I go. Flash it as you're working on it, right? Oh, Flash. No, that's finished. That's so finished. I'll go oh, back okay, to okay. any one of the things filming in Vancouver, which is a lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> so good. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Ta-da! Great. That was wonderful.